Now let's introduce our first Q operator. It's called count. Count counts the number of items in a list. In Q, we call the entities in a list items. Count tells you how many there are. That's our first Q operator. Let's see what else we can do with Q lists. Well, we can add a plain old number to each item in a list. So in this case, we'll add 1 to 10, 20, and 30. Right? So that's adding a single number on the left to a list on the right. In this context, if we're calling the list a vector, we would call the single number a scalar. Or sometimes in QSpeak, we'll call it an atom. So you can also add an atom or a scalar on the right to a list. And so things work the way you'd expect them to work. Right? We can divide two into all the items in a list. Now that we know how to do basic operations in Q, we're going to hit the first major quirk of Q. There will be others, but this is the first one that is a roadblock for people learning Q. And that is, in Q, as opposed to every other language, all operators have the same precedence. Precedence means which operations come first. So you probably remember from elementary school multiplication and division before addition and subtraction, which sounds all well and good because, well, they tell you it eliminates parentheses, except that when you have more operations, like exponential, then you have to say, well, is that before or after multiplication, division, and precedence? Well, it's before. But then what happens when you have more and more operations? It gets very confusing. So Q has a unique solution to this. It says there is no precedence. All operators are equal. Well, then, how do you know what order to do things in? We have a very simple answer to that also. Everything is done right to left. So, if I write the following code in Q, 2 times 3 plus 4, in every other programming language known to man, that would be 10. In Q, it's right to left. So, first we do 3 plus 4, which is 7, and we multiply by 2, which is 14. Now, you may say, that's really unnatural. And in fact, it's not. This is actually based on mathematics and the order in which composite functions are evaluated. But we can talk about that later when we talk more about functions. You've actually been doing right to left all your life when you were taking mathematics in college. You just didn't know it. All right, so now that we know how to deal with vectors, and we know that Q wants to put things together without loops, in QSpeak, we call code that writes explicit loops loopy code. Let's do some Q. So let's make our second Q operator, which is called TIL. TIL generates a list of numbers. So TIL on 3 says, give me three integers starting at 0, up TIL, but not including 3. So TIL 3 generates 0, 1, and 2. TIL 100 generates a hundred integers starting at zero. Notice the dot dot. This is just truncation of the display on the console. The list actually is a hundred numbers. How do you know that? Because you can count it. Why do they call it the count? Because it loves to count the one and the two and the three. Anyone grow up on Sesame Street? I guess not. All right. So remember, this is right to left. So 100 is an argument to till, which gives us a list of a hundred integers. That is then put into count, and count says, yes, there's 100 there. All right, so what if we did this? Hey, let's be bold. That is 10 million. And you say, surely he didn't just generate 10 million integers. And I say, please don't call me Shirley. And secondly, let's see, did he really generate 10 million integers that quickly? Yes, he did. All right, so now you're beginning to get a little sense of the power and the conciseness of Q. So let's do some Q. We actually know enough to be dangerous already. 
So let's just say, here is the first 20 integers starting at zero. Now remember, right to left, let's generate that list and add one to it. So there's the first 20 integers starting at one, and thereby ending at 20. Here, let's generate the first 20 integers starting at zero and multiply it by two, so there's the first 20 even integers. Let's do that, remember, right to left, add one, there's the first 20 odd integers. There is a pattern here. There's the first 20 odd integers starting at 101. And just for yucks, here is the first 10 million odd integers. And you notice the computer hesitated just for a fraction of a second. Yes, because it took it that long to generate 10 million integers, multiply them by two, and add one. And by the way, this laptop is almost five years old. So now you get the idea. Q is a vector language. It doesn't want to run or operate on individual numbers. It wants to operate on lists of numbers. And in fact, it doesn't even wake up until you get into the millions. It doesn't sweat until you get into the tens or hundreds of millions. This is the power of Q.